your attention towards whatever it is that is aware of your current experience. Your thoughts, your images, your bodily sensations, the sight of this room, the sound of this voice. We, we have no doubt that, that this, the, that we refer to as I, it, it is present and, and it is aware. What else can you say about it? And if there's nothing else we can say about it, other than that it is present and aware, it, it can have no objective quality. Mm -hmm. So how could something that has no objective quality move? We contract, for, because you, you said, and I could see that you went into your experience. All we know is that this I is present and aware. There's nothing else mm. we can say about it unless we use synonyms for those two words. So, as such, there's no question of it moving or changing. Only an object could move or change or evolve, appear, disappear, be born, grow old, die. But just by simply going to our experience, we know that our self is not an objective experience. It is present. I am. Mm. But we, the habit of associating this I am with a cluster of sensations up here or a cluster of sensations in here is so strong that we, we, we without realizing it, we make this assumption because we've been rehearsing it for so many years. And then, once we have identified this I am with an object, then, of course, we feel I move, I was born, I grow old, I change, I'm going to die. But in order to have that belief, and more importantly that feeling, we have first to have forgotten the true nature of ourself and imagined ourselves instead to be located in here. But when we look to see if there is any experiential evidence for that belief, we don't find any. We don't have to make a new belief about what we are. We just have to see the old beliefs for what they are. Beliefs. Beliefs rather than facts. We don't even need to get rid of them. Once we see that it's a belief, that it doesn't bear any true, that it doesn't truly represent our experience. It just dwindles away in time th through being seen to be false. It doesn't need to be replaced by a new concept about what I am is. We don't need to know any more than I am. And to stay close, just to stay with what we know, in other words, to look at ourself, to see what we know for sure, and then to live the implications of that understanding. Take your, take your arm now and just, just move it. Yeah, just move it. Now there's something that is aware of this movement. Yes, yeah. that, that is a sensation mm -hmm. that is flowing through you. We could say that the sensation is movement. We could say there was a flow of sensation. Okay. But just at a physical level, does the space, does this physical space in which this moving arm appear, does it move? No. So why do you think that the con now transfer that? Mm. Does the conscious space of awareness move when the sensation that appears in it moves? Just experience the fact that there is a flow of sensation yep. that, as it were, flows through you or appears in you. But that in which it appears is not flowing. It's not moving. Mm -hmm. Don't look for it as an object. Don't try to find it as an object. You're, you're trying to look for a static object. Right. Okay. We're trying to look for an object called consciousness that doesn't move. Right. It just doesn't exist. I'm not going to find it. Yeah. And, and looking for it as an object is yeah. preventing you from being that space. 
and allowing the mind and the world and the body to flow through it. When you walk into this room, there's a, a new flow of sensations and a new flow of perceptions, maybe a new flow of thoughts. But does that in which they appear flow? In other words, I does not walk into a room, does not sit down on a chair. I, awareness, that in which the thoughts, sensations and perceptions appear, does not appear, does not flow. It's enough to let the objects of the mind and the body and the world flow. Don't look for that which doesn't flow. It's enough, by definition, if we're letting the mind, the body and the world flow, without knowing it, we are standing on the bank. Without knowing it, we are taking our stand as that which does not flow. Walking is, is, is a label that is attached by the mind, that is superimposed by the mind on the experience itself. It's not, I'm not saying it's not a, a valid concept mm. that is necessary to use sometimes, but it's not a concept that describes our experience. We don't have to get rid of the concept of walking. We have to see through the belief that it is true. You can still keep the concept of walking, use it when it's necessary, but no longer believe that it represents our experience. That's the only difference. seems to be a like a time bomb and it goes off whenever it goes off about half hour before we started I'm having the thought is there a difference between condition to action and freeing action so instead of thinking about it I I went then it went to where does action fit with sensing perceiving, where does it fit in there? So I was walking, see where action was, and I realized I'm having a lie because it all happened real fast. But as I was, as walking seemed to be happening, what I realized was action was a story that gets added very quickly because that all there was was and it, what, it's not sensations or perception. There's that static. As I walked, there was simply perceiving and sensing. The whole thing started to collapse. And so I started, I said, okay, I'm going to keep walking and up and down the stairs here. And as I did, all there was, like you said, <laughs> the sensing and perceiving, suddenly that became seen like artificial, like a, 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 and that all just started to come together until all there was was knowing. And I'm going up the stairs and time collapses because there's no, there's no this is happening and there's just, it's as if I had been watching a movie and suddenly was able to speed up enough to be able to see the individual frames and that there wasn't motion going on. There was individual frames, one after the other. And, and then I'm not walking up the stairs. There's no eye walking anywhere. Um, there's, there's not scent. It's, there's just knowing and you said that so but there was just there's just knowing and I'm walking down the hall toward the room 
that's a lie, but that's what I have to say. And there's no hallway there, and there's no me walking there. And it's not my pictures of what that meant. And it's not my pictures of nobody's going anywhere. Nobody, it's, all, it's just this pulsing knowing on, off, on, off, coming, and it's not even an off, it's just all inside knowing. <laughs> so, uh, there was, there's no time, no space, no sensing, no perceiving, it's just knowing. And um, I know that, and it looks like there's a hallway and a person and someone talking. So, um, and then you started this... <laughs> Then you started doing this. Was like, and I, 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 had, I was trying to stay with you simply because I, I knew it, I was, I, I, I couldn't quite shrink back into it. But it's, it's your. I've been in a few of these with you, and why well, I said uh, like a time bomb. These is what you did before, and then all of a sudden, just before exactly, you went, boom. Exactly. There's just, I'm just. This is, I'm barely staying in my seat. Whatever that. Means. <laughs> uh, it's just, I mean, it's just vibration. Yeah. So first, thank you. <laughs> and, and the other is, is there, and then I noticed the mind wanting to make something of it and make it special. So, but is there anything you, you can say just keep pushing that? It's just, it's just the, I mean, it's like just, nothing Just talk about keep it. taking yourself back over and over again. Walk yourself back through the process that you've just described to us. It started with the feeling that, of acting what is acting and walking. And then through your experience, you realize, no, it's actually acting and walking are, are secondary. It's actually just sensing and perceiving. And sensing and perceiving is not acting or moving. It's just sensing and perceiving. You continue walking up the stairs, you, but as you rightly say, you're not, it's no longer walking up the stairs. It's just this sensing and perceiving taking place in the same place, like like the stills you, yeah, you, you place, describe. Yeah. But then, as you say, sensing and perceiving, it's like you, you, you put it under the microscope, you turn it up from 100 to 1,000, you realize it's just knowing. It's, it's, not, it's not even sensing and perceiving. Sensing and perceiving are modulations of the essential substance is knowing. Now, what is that knowing doing? <clears throat> that knowing is not, what does experience look like from there? And that's actually what is knowing experience. All experience is only happening from there rather than from thought, which looks at it from the outside and calls it walking and acting, then sensing and perceiving, and then knowing. But from that knowing, what does that knowing know? Does it know, ever know anything other than itself, such as sensing and perceiving, walking and acting, thinking and feeling, doing and relating? No, it doesn't. It just knows its own eternal, infinite self. And these, these meditations that we do, you describe them quite rightly as kind of time bombs. They, they don't occasionally, they, they, they go off, um, you know, as they're planted, but, but usually they have a delay mechanism on them. <laughs> And that's why, I mean, I didn't think of it, but when I think back on it now, that's why at the end of this meditation I said, don't do anything now. J just leave it. J just be regular. Let's have a conversation. Just leave it alone. Don't now start exploring what we've just done with thought. It, the time bond has been planted and it's ticking. <laughs> It usually goes off when we're least expecting it. And, and when we look back, those moments are, are when we're just uh, open and available. When we're walking down the high streets, we, we've, we've done our shopping, there's nothing to do, there's no appointment to go to, we're just, we're just available. We're not concerned with anything. And then the bomb goes off. Suddenly, in this moment of availability, you, well, in your case, a series of revelations 
went off one by one. And, and that, that's, that's what these meditations are. They're, they're, they're like little time... Well, actually, they're quite big time lobes. <laughs> First of all, that's a really lovely blue shirt. <laughs> I, I hope you're not dazzled by its brightness. <laughs> it's a little distracting. Um, so I've been exploring the, um, the phenomenon of effort. Um, I've been using my running as a meditative practice and... and using it as a way to um, to go towards what do I really, really experience. Because running is often associated with effort. And what I've discovered is there is no effort. That, that when I... There, effort is something that seems synonymous with a me thought. That there's something I'm, I'm doing. Um, so as I explored or as I explore climbing a hill while running, I distill it and distill it and distill it, and all I come to is physical sensations and perceptions continue. Did you say... Phys physical sensations. Yes, yes. There's just sensation. You can't be sure they're physical sensations. Right. They're just sensations, yes. But I can't... Perfect, but, but that's perfect, yes. I can't find effort. Exactly. And it's not because I'm a great runner. Yes. It... it there, it's so now I go looking for well, effort. A, actually, that would be a quality of a great runner or a great sports person to, to have that experience. So I think I'm wanting to check out whether I'm sort of on a crazy train or whether I'm on to something. Um, because it, I don't feel like I'm running. Yes. No, you, you're going in absolutely the right direction with this. Your meditation is active. It is, it is meditation in the presence of objects. It is meditation in the midst of activity and experience. You haven't turned away from experience. This self-abidance is a, the mind turns away from objective experience. It turns backwards or inwards or selfwards towards the source of the mind, awareness. We could call it meditation with our eyes closed, by which I mean not directed towards objects. But, but you're, you're, what you're describing is meditation with your eyes open, in other words, in the midst of experience or activity. And you're discovering that even in the midst of intense activity, actually what you are, is perfect stillness, perfect effortless stillness. That's beautiful. Keep going in that direction. And not only will it improve your skills as a runner hugely, <laughs> but much more importantly, it will give you, and is obviously already giving you a, a, a visceral taste of the fact that you are this imperturbable presence of awareness in the midst of intense activity. Now, translate that not to the next intense physical activity you're engaged in, but the next intense emotional activity you find yourself engaged in. In other words, when there is intense emotion, and do the same experiment and imagine the impact on your life if you discovered that at that moment you were perfect, imperturbable, unmovable peace. So just one more thing. This is a tough question to not sound crazy. This is me. Like not this. 
Is that right? I mean, not the Martha thought is just a thought like what a great day today is or that's a nice carpet. My experience through this um, retreat is identification is not contained to Martha. Is that, yes. is yes. that crazy? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> You're on the right track. So if I tune into the sensation at the soles of my feet, I can actually feel that throughout the field of awareness, not localized to what I used to consider my feet. Sensations don't seem localized. Yes. So okay. body doesn't feel localized. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yes, because or just to um, commentate on, on what you've said, which is absolutely true. But when we say all experience takes place here, we normally mean here where the body is located in space. Yeah. But if you notice, wherever the body is located in space is called here. In other words, every point of space is potentially here. Therefore, here is not a particular place in space. What we actually mean when we say all experience takes place here is all experience takes place here in consciousness. Because consciousness is always in the same place. Consciousness never goes anywhere. And isn't it your experience that you, consciousness, never go anywhere? Like the screen never goes anywhere in a movie. Conscious, the, a, a flow of thoughts and images and feelings, sensations and perceptions flow through consciousness. But consciousness itself never flows or goes anywhere. So what you're describing is true. You're, uh, con in, in other words, consciousness is not located in a place or at a place. All apparent places are located in consciousness. Love is a place, and in this place of love, shine with brightness of peace all places. Yes is a world, and in this world of yes, live skillfully curled all worlds. E. e. Cummings is referring to the same experience you're referring to. Each of us does do it in all kinds of different situations so that what we discover in our meditation doesn't just hold good in these uh, peaceful circumstances but, but in, in all kinds of circumstances pleasant, unpleasant, easy, difficult what would it look like? Um, let's say you were walking along a lane you could focus on the sensations that were present, that were generated through the movement of walking, and explore those sensations in just the same way that we explore sensations here. So here, the, the sensation when we're sitting or lying down, the sensation is just very gently undulating or vibrating. It's like... But when you're walking, the undulation is 
it's it's still just the same stuff. It's still just sensation, but the undulation is a little more. The vibration is 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 intenser, but explore it. See if you can find a find an edge to the sensation. If you were to if you were to make a drawing of the shape of this sensation as it quivered and, and moved, what kind of a drawing would you make? Can you find a, a place where the sensation ends and the space all around it begins? Then you you could take it deeper. You ask what is it that even knows that it is something called a sensation? Does the sensation know that it is a sensation? Does the body know that it is a body? Does the world know that it is a world? Because you're out in the world now, you're, you're walking so your eyes are open, so include the world in, in, in your meditation. The world, it, all you know of the world as you're walking down the lane is the current perception. That perception is just made out of the experience of perceiving. Is that perceiving taking place at a particular place? Ask yourself that question. Is the experience of perceiving taking place at a particular place? Thought will say, yes, it's taking place here and not there. But the only experience of here is itself a perception. Where is that perception taking place? You really is this world which is made out of my only knowledge of it is perceiving perceiving is not located in the world the world as I experience it is a modulation of perceiving now where is perceiving taking place or what is perceiving made out of the only substance present and you have to you have to go through this I'm speaking it but you actually you, you go through the experience what is the experience of perceiving is made out of something. There is some substance, some reality there to the experience of perception. What is that? Just knowing. Just the knowing. of That is the only stuff that we experience. Thought postulates stuff called matter, which exists outside of and independent of knowing, but nobody has ever found or come in contact with that stuff. We just know, in relation to the world, the knowing of perception. And perception is, is something that belongs to mind. It doesn't belong to the world. The world can't see itself. The world doesn't experience itself in color. It doesn't have eyes. It, it's, it's the mind that adds its five modes of perceiving, seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling, and superimposes those onto the, the actual world, which itself is devoid of all these characteristics. In other words, it's just made out of pure being, pure isness. So you, you could see, you could explore your experience as you walk along. Deconstruct your experience as you're walking along. You think you're seeing a world. We don't see because there is a world. We don't perceive because there is a world. There is a world because we perceive. We don't perceive objects because they are there. They are there. We don't think about objects because they are there. They are there because we think about them. I'm not saying experience is made out of thinking, but it is thinking that abstracts the separate subjects and objects from this seamless intimacy of experiencing. So I'm not saying that experience is created by thought, but it is thought that... That, soup, that fragments experience, breaks it up into a multiplicity and diversity of objects and selves. So as you're walking along, you can, you can actually experience this. You, you, and first of all, you come back one step from the multiplicity and diversity of objects, in this case trees and fields and skies as you're walking through the landscape, and you realize, no, it's, it's made out of... It, it, it's just made out of, or you're walking as well, so you, your, your body is included. It's all made out of sensing and perceiving. That you're, you're, you're reducing the world from matter to mind. 
you realize, oh, I don't actually experience objects. All I know of these so-called objects, including the body, is sensing and perceiving. In other words, all I know is mind. All I know of the body and the world is sensing and perceiving. But that's only halfway. If we stop there, we just become idealists. You have to go further and see, okay, all I know now is the experience of perceiving and sensing. But what is, what is the, they are made out of something. The experience of perceiving is made out of something. What is it made of? And then that's the, the next step. We, we reduce sensing and perceiving into pure knowing, into pure consciousness. And you can do all this as you're walking on. And I would recommend it. First walking along a, a, a peaceful country lane and, and then walking down a busy high street. The only time you're not allowed to do it is when you're driving. <laughs> But then, then you'll see at some stage, and at some stage, and it usually happens spontaneously, actually, not during the investigation itself, but at, at, a, at an unexpected moment when the mind is just open and free and available. Suddenly, the world, when I say the world, I don't mean experience, but I mean the world of apparent objects and selves all distinct from each other there is it it suddenly kind of collapses first of all into perceiving and then into pure knowing right in the midst you're, you're walking along you realize all that is known is knowing and then the last question who is it that knows that knowing is knowing known by a separate a separate knower no it is knowing that knows knowing that then as you're walking along you, you, you feel that, that, that it is yourself all you ever come in contact with is yourself it is yourself this pure knowing vibrating as sensing and perceiving which the mind out of which the mind abstracts a world and a body separate selves and objects 